Good morning and welcome to Western Baptist Church's online act of worship. This morning we're going to sing together, pray together, hear from God's word and we'll also be taking communion together as well. So you might want to pause here and get some bread, some wine, juice, whatever you use as we share the Lord's Supper together as a fellowship. There's an amazing moment in Luke chapter 1 after the angel Gabriel has told Mary that she is going to be the mother of Jesus, that she responds in an absolutely fascinating way. She responds by saying this, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And I've been really struck by those words. May it be to me as you have said. As you have said. The Lord says a number of things over us. And sometimes it's easy for, to forget what they are. And it's easy to forget the power of those things that he says over us. May it be as you have said. Well, the Lord says over us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Lord says over us that he has a plan for us to prosper us. The Lord says to us that if we call upon his name, we can be known as children of God. The Lord says to us that he can do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. You know, the Lord speaks over us in a number of different ways. The Lord has words for each and every single one of us. My prayer for you during this Advent time is that we would be able to look to the Lord with these fresh eyes of revelation as we go through these familiar passages with with this new vision that we can look to what the Lord says and that we could join with Mary and say I am your servant Lord may it be as you have said may you do immeasurably more than I can ask or imagine in my life for your glory Lord Lord thank you that I am fearfully and wonderfully made and I'm I'm held in your hands. Thank you, Lord, that I can be a child of God. This morning, if you need that encouragement, I pray that you would go back to Scripture, back to the Lord. Read what he speaks over you and know that when the Lord speaks, his word does not return void. When the Lord speaks, action takes place. When the Lord speaks creation comes into being. May the Lord speak over you this morning, into this week, over this whole Advent period and into the rest of your life.
Good morning. We bring our prayers of worship to God this Advent season. In this season of Advent and of expectation, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, our Saviour, into the bustle of our lives and the hard to find moments of solitude. We prepare to welcome you, Christ Jesus, our Saviour, into our homes and situations, along with friends and families. We prepare to welcome you, Christ Jesus, Saviour, into our hearts and those often hidden parts of our lives. We prepare to welcome you, Christ Jesus, our Saviour, for beneath the surface of your story is an inescapable fact. You entered this world as vulnerable as any of us in order to nail that vulnerability to the cross. Our fears, our insecurities and our sins all that can separate us from God, exchanged by your grace and your love. We cannot comprehend the reasoning, only marvel that salvation comes to us through a baby born in a stable and reaches out to a world in need. In this season of anticipation, we worship you and we welcome you, Christ Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen.
We base our intercessions this week on the visit of the angels to the shepherds. The angel said to the shepherds, uh, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favour rests. Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, as you stepped in time past down into this world and became incarnate in the child of Bethlehem, bringing joy and peace and hope to our world. So we pray again that by your Spirit and through the Gospel, you would step into the lives of many people and many places at this time. The angels brought news of great joy. And we pray for those who, for a whole variety of reasons, are struggling to find joy in their lives at the moment. We pray for those whose anxiety levels have risen during recent days of uh, restrictions, who maybe have lost their jobs and are fearful about their financial future. We pray for those who've suffered from isolation and whose mental illness has been impaired and sadness and darkness has begun to cloud their minds. Lord, grant that they may find a trust in you and a faith in the living God which will take them through and restore their joy, we pray. We thank you, Lord, that the angels brought news of peace on earth among those whom your favour rests. And we are conscious day by day of the conflict-ridden world of which we're a part. A world very much as it was in Jesus' day, when politics divided people and military oppression kept some under the boot. And we pray for those war-torn parts of our world still, for Syria and for the unrest of so many countries in the Middle East, for conflict between Israel and Palestinian. We pray for countries that briefly hit the headlines and then disappear, but who still struggle, where military might rules rather than justice and peace. And we pray that by your Spirit you might step in again and that the Prince of Peace may bring people to their senses, bring them under the wisdom of your rule, enable them to repent of division and of hatred and of violence, and cause them to be reconciled to one another, we pray. We thank you that the angels brought good news of a saviour. And we know that that is the greatest good news of all, which our world desperately needs beyond any immediate good news of uh, salvation from a pandemic. And Lord, we pray for the progress of the gospel, both here in Whetstone locally and around the world and in the nations of the world that people may hear the ultimate good news is found not in simply overcoming sickness or prolonging this earthly life, but in truly being reconciled to you and being rescued from the illegitimate rule of Satan and of sin in their lives. Speed, we pray, the work of the gospel. And as the angels brought that news of the Saviour born in Bethlehem. Enable that news to go out again this Christmas of the Saviour, the Rescuer, the Deliverer, 
that the world needs to turn to. Father, we pray that as you stepped into our world 2,000 years ago, by your Spirit you would still be stepping into the lives of people now, into our lives, into the lives of communities and nations, to bring about joy and peace and good news through Jesus Christ, who is indeed our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. Well, it's nearly Christmas and some, most of us have now put up our Christmas decorations, symbols of the festival that we're going to celebrate in a couple of weeks' time, the birth of our Saviour. And as we take the bread and the wine today, they're actually symbols of a Jewish festival that Jesus was at with his followers. When they were celebrating the Passover, when they were celebrating God's rescue of his people from Egypt. They were having a special meal together which included lamb, bitter herbs, unleavened bread and wine. There were also activities for the children during that meal. And Jesus stopped in the middle of it all and he showed them from these symbols what would happen to him on that first Easter. So first of all he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then we read in the same way after supper, he took the cup and he drank the wine. And he said, this is the blood of my new covenant. Whenever you drink it, drink in remembrance of me. So let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that Jesus at that Last Supper um, took symbols of God's rescue, God's goodness, and showed his disciples what he would be doing for us. So thank you that ever since we've had this gift of bread, we've had this gift of wine, that we've been able to remember the amazing thing that Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen. So we're just going to take some of that bread now and we're going to uh, just eat it and just quietly remember all that Jesus did for us on the cross. when we're in church together we usually have a small cup and we drink together as a sign that because of Jesus death we have a relationship with him but he made us into his people that we belong together so as we drink this cup now most of us seated perhaps even on our own or in just ones and twos as we drink it let's give thanks that Jesus made us into his people So Father, we thank you again for this bread and wine. Thank you that we can just remember very quietly how at that first Easter you died in our place and saved us through a relationship with you. And as we drink the wine, we can remember that you made us into your people, the people of God, your family, the family of God. So we praise and thank you for all that you did. And Lord, as we pause now, we want to pray for ourselves. We want to pray for the family at Weston. We want to thank you for them. We want to thank you for one another. And we pray now, we pray for those who have anxieties, 
We pray for those who have been bereaved during this time and ask that you would comfort those who mourn. We pray for those who are sick at this time or have loved ones who are sick and ask that you would lay your healing hand upon them. We pray for those who are anxious at this time, perhaps with financial difficulties, worries about jobs, worries about family members. Again, Lord, we ask that you'd work in their lives, you would bring goodness into their lives. And Lord, we pray that you would bring peace. We thank you too that there is a vaccination now, a vaccine. We thank you that people have started to receive it. So we look forward to, yes, Christmas celebrating your birth, but to the new year. We pray that these vaccines will change things and that COVID will go away. And we look forward to the day when we worship with you and with one another. We look forward to that day with anticipation. So we commit ourselves to you now in Jesus' name. Amen.
there were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. For it was by God's own decision that the Son has in himself the full nature of God. Through the Son, then, God decided to bring the whole universe back to himself. God made peace through his Son's blood on the cross, and so brought back to himself all things, both on earth and in heaven. Hello everyone. Uh, one of the advantages of doing your Christmas shopping online is that you don't have to listen to all those old Christmas number ones that are being played in all the shops at this time of the, of the year. I don't know what this year's uh, Christmas number one is going to be, but I would like to nominate one. Uh, and I would like to nominate the Angels song from Luke chapter 2 and verse 14. Now, I know that for some of you, this song is as familiar as Noddy Holder's I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day. You've sung these words so often in Christmas carols over the year that it can almost become background music. But it seems to me that the words of this song are especially this year uh, words that we need to hear. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Arguably, this year has been marked by a distinct lack of peace. Health professionals are saying that uh, the pandemic has led to a significant deterioration in the mental health of our nation, with rising levels of anxiety and of loneliness. Now, you may be thinking at the moment that you don't need me to be telling you that. I quite understand. Others are saying that uh, looking forward, uh, we should be expecting almost a tsunami of post-traumatic depression as the real impact uh, of the coronavirus crisis kicks in emotionally, socially and financially. Greg Lake uh, sang in one of those old overdone number one, I don't know if it was a number one actually, but a Christmas song certainly. He sang these words. They said there'd be snow at Christmas they said there'd be peace on earth. And the implication that uh, Greg Lake was trying to make was that there are neither. Well, you never know. It might be a white Christmas after all. But I think there's some truth in the words uh, that he sang. And even those peaceful Christmas card scenes, you know the ones of the stable and uh, Bethlehem and so on don't really do justice to the real story. It was hardly a time of serenity. The shepherds were terrified. King Herod was deeply disturbed and with him all of Jerusalem. And shortly after the birth of the Lord Jesus, uh, there was such an awful massacre of children uh, that many, many parents were left in total grief and despair. 
So what is the good news of peace on earth that the angels sing about at Jesus' birth? What is the peace that God offers us in the birth of his son in Bethlehem? Clearly, it cannot be a disappearance of all sadness and sorrow. That is promised at Jesus' second coming, when God will make all things new and when suffering and mourning and death itself will come to an end. We rightly long for that day when God's perfect reign of peace, when his kingdom of peace will come into all its fullness. But until then, it has to be about something that can coexist with all the mayhem that we see going on in our world. It has to be a peace that we experience and receive, whether things are hunky-dory or whether things are going deeply pear-shaped. The clue is in the word that the Bible uses for peace. Shalom. Shalom goes well beyond just an absence of problems. Shalom is about being in a place where we should be. About human beings being complete and fulfilled, healed, secure. And to use a popular word, full of well-being. This is a peace which is not man-made, but a peace that is made by God himself. Jesus said in his own ministry, didn't he? Uh, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. It's not the peace that the, that the world gives. Jesus Christ's arrival is all about God's shalom. The angels are announcing the birth of the Saviour, the birth of Messiah, the birth of the Lord, of God himself coming to us in the frame of a little baby. And the appearance of that awesome angelic host to these ordinary working men out there on that hillside in the middle of the night, uh, caring for uh, their animals, their sheep, means that this is a hugely supernatural event. God is doing something momentous here. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. The Messiah's coming is literally restoring the beautiful harmony of heaven and earth. God and his cosmos. God and all that he has created. Jesus' birth is about shalom peace. And that shalom peace is not so much like the time when the kids leave us alone after uh, Christmas dinner so that uh, you know you can have a snooze before um, the Queen's speech, sort of a bit of peace and quiet. Rather, it's more like the chaotic love of family swapping presents and enjoying uh, the intimate togetherness. So, the gift of the Prince of Peace is about a total reversal of the disharmony, the disconnection and the separation between us and God that has messed us up completely ever since Adam and Eve gave way to sin in the Garden of Eden. This baby will become the man on the cross who will shed his own life blood for us to reconcile us to our maker, to make peace where our sin has put us at war with God. And that may sound a bit strong, but you know, even passi passively ignoring God even living as if he doesn't exist is hurtful and offensive 
uh, to the maker of the world. Nodding in his direction occasionally is certainly not enough to make us friends with God. Something much, much more is needed. And the good news that the angels brought to the shepherds is that it is the arrival of this baby and later his death and his resurrection that allows us to enjoy that shalom with God. That allows us to come into a relationship with God where God's glory is no longer uh, an experience of terror but rather an experience of coming home to our Heavenly Father as his adopted children. And it is this peace, it's this reconnection with God, it's this being with God, just as God is with us in Christ. It is in this experience of his closest presence that Paul says, we have peace that passes all understanding and guards our hearts in Christ Jesus as we face the upheavals, the uncertainties and the unhappiness of our weary, weary world. I'm glad that Jesus came to give us that kind of peace. Not a man-made peace that just sorts out a few problems and changes a few circumstances. But a peace that comes from a real connection with our Father. A peace that comes from being with him as he is with us in Christ. That's what Jesus came to achieve for us. Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. And Jesus models to us how we too can bring peace to our fractured world. Knowing that peace with God, experiencing that peace with God, allows us to become his channels of peace to our families, in our workplaces and among our friends. Maybe this Christmas, that is the one vocation that God is giving to you. To be a peacemaker, whether it's in the home or in the office, or whether it's when you are on a Zoom meeting with all your friends, to be that channel of reconciliation and reconnection between those who've become separated and have become at odds with one another. The peace of God has come. And that peace comes to those on whom God's favour rests. That phrase can sound a bit like it's an exclusive few. I don't think that's what is meant here at all. Remember, this is in the context of the shepherds hearing this news is for them. And they were a bunch way down the social order uh, who quite understandably would think that they were outside of anything that God was likely to do. No, this is for all of us. Whatever we have done and whoever we are. But this gift rests on those who will receive the giver. It is his grace and his undeserved love that offers this wonderful gift. And the good news is this Christmas that grace have pe and peace have fallen on this world and that grace and peace have fallen on you and me. Peace was on God's Christmas list for the world and peace is on God's Christmas list for you, whatever may be going on in your life. I pray that you will enter into that wonderful connection that Jesus has made between you and your Father. And in the enjoyment of that connection of 
father and child, that you will experience the peace that passes all understanding and guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Having seen that it was all as the angels had told them, that it was all true, the shepherds, we're told in verse 20 later on, went and joined in with the angel's song, praising God and giving glory to God in the highest. I wonder if we can join in this song too. Why not make it your number one Christmas song for 2020? And grace and peace to you many times over this year as you deepen your experience with God and Jesus, our Prince of Peace. Let's pray. Father, this is not a peaceful world and this last year has left so many of us and so many of the people we know struggling with anxiety, uh, with fears, with concerns and worries, not just for the present but for the future. But we thank you that Jesus came and that he came to bring your shalom peace to us all. Thank you that he went to the cross in order to make peace between us and you through the shedding of his own precious blood. Thank you, Lord, that you were willing to do that because you long for us to enjoy the shalom of a deep and intimate relationship with yourself. We thank you that your presence in us is peace and that whatever's going on in our life just now, that invitation to come and to receive that gift again is as open as it was on the day that Jesus came. Help us, Lord, this Christmas to receive that gift as we receive the giver and Lord let us be your channels of peace too wherever we may find ourselves to the glory of your name Amen Approach my soul the mercy seat where Jesus answers prayer there humbly fall before his feet, for none can perish there. Thy promise is my only plea, with this I venture nigh. Thou callest burdened souls to thee, such, O oh Lord, am I. In worship bow before his throne and rest beneath his wings. With trembling hands and awe-filled heart, cast your crown unto your King. Bow down beneath the load of sin by Satan's holy breast. By war without and fears within, I come to thee for rest. Poor tempest tossed its soul be still. My promise grace receive Tis Jesus speaks I must I will I can I do believe You worship bow before his throne and rest beneath his wings 
with trembling hands and a filled heart, cast your crown unto your King. Be thou my shield and hiding place that sheltered by thy side. I may my fears accuse of face and tell him thou hast died. O wondrous love to bleed and die, to bear the cross and shame, the guilty sinner such as I might plead thy gracious Worship bow before his throne and rest beneath his wings with trembling hands and a filled heart. Cast your crown unto your king and worship bow before his throne. Rest beneath his Trembling hands and a filled heart, cast your crown unto your King. Your King. So, just as Mary responded to the angel with the words, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me as you have said, I pray that this week. We would know that if we are servants of the Lord, if we believe in him, then we can trust in the words that he says to us. My prayer this week is that you would know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, even though at times it doesn't feel like it. This week, I pray that you would know that the Lord has a plan for you. He has a use for you. He values and esteems you. He loves you. And he will do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine according to his power at work within you. Lord, as your servant, may we have the faith, may we have your spirit to guide us to see that when you speak over us, amazing things happen for your glory. May the Lord bless you this week and may you know his presence regardless of how dark the days are.